Hey YouTube, Meep Magnet here. Today is Guide 5. The title of this one is Channels and Cable Management. So this is another part of our AE2 series. What I wanted to do was kind of go over ME controller channels, how to utilize those and how to max those out and get the most use per controller, and then a little bit about cable management. So let's get right to it. If you take a look here, we've got eight devices. So this is still the same setup we've had. Just keep using this. And it'll evolve a little more over time. We're going to keep using this. What we are looking at is a maxed out side of an ME controller. So each ME controller has a potential to support eight sides with a max of 32. And I'll get to that in a little bit. What we're looking at for this particular setup is a max of eight. Technically, our ME drive in line here functions as a regular say just a regular cable it's not dense it's just a regular glass cable so we can only potentially pull eight channels off this side with this setup now just to show what happens here since this is a max size I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna add two graphing terminals on here and give it a second to buffer in and still, you can see at the top of the screen here that device is still missing a channel and these are not ever going to work. So, how do we actually remedy that? Well, there's a couple ways we can do this. Um, and there's a couple different cables I'm actually going to go over here. And let's do that right now. One of the cables that I really, really, really like to use is called a ME Smart Cable. The cool thing about these guys is that they show you visually how many channels you've got going. These are incredibly handy and you'll notice that eventually once your networks get huge that it's really awesome to know what the hell is running on your network and these these do an awesome job of, of helping you figure that out. So what we've got and this is a pretty simple recipe ME covered cable, redstone, glowstone and that'll get you a one to one ME smart cable the way you get these covered cables. It's just a glass cable with a piece of wool. So this is one to one. That'll get you a smart cable. So let's check that out in action. Um, these ME smart cables, this is just regular fluid. So this is your base. This isn't colored. You can color these. Let's set a few of these up here just so we can see what's actually going on. One, two, three, four. And you can see these these channels are actually visualized on the cable. You can see four of eight channels because we've got four devices. takes up four channels. So what happens when we add a fifth on these? Here's our next line. Now, the great thing about these cables is that it'll show you, if you go to whatever side of the controller you're on, it will show you how many channels are occupied up to that point. So... Once we get to the next device, we can see that, okay, this one dropped, so we've only got four lines here. We've got another device, it dropped, another device dropped until we've got down to the very last device. Incredibly helpful if we keep adding these in and the way these change, because usually it goes last. Um, the last device counts as the first channel. You'll see that these actually do start to change. And we can max this one out. So this is what this looks like with a maxed out cable. These actually are only capable of eight channels with this. So we can actually go in here and go turn this into a dense cable. Now the way you get those, it's pretty pretty close to the same for smart cables, except you're using four, four ME covered cables. And that'll get you your dense cable. So let's take this off here and just see what it does. All right, and there you see it. Now, since this cable is still actually maxed out, you're going to see the max out visually here. But then if you go over here, you're going to see that there's two lines on this dense cable. So that that is showing us are eight channels here. Uh, what this looks like when you actually start maxing this out, it, it looks very, very similar to this. The best way to actually look at this, though, is if you've got Wayla installed, and I hope you do. 
you can actually just look at this visually, or excuse me, you just check it out to see how many channels you actually have running. These are handy to see when you got a really big base. You can kind of see, oh, well, I can split some stuff off here, kind of organize a little bit better, but just keep in mind. These dense cables are awesome. Use those. So once we've got a dense cable on a side, it automatically switches to 32 channels. So we have 32 potential channels that can come off this dense cable. It's very handy once you start to get into increasing the size of your base. These, like I said, they, they work very, very well, and you don't have to make another Emmy controller right away. So this will just help you increase the amount of channels. So we've got all of this Fluix cable and stuff out here, the most basic cable. And if we try putting some of this stuff out here, look at this mess. This, is, this becomes a huge mess. You don't know what channels you've got where. This says there's six channels occupied. So these are actually pulling off this glass cable and going into the top. Now this one side here only has two channels occupied. This becomes a huge, huge, huge pain in the ass. So how do we remedy it? The way to actually go about doing this is to start coloring our cable. And that's not real difficult to do. If you take a look here, I've actually taken a bunch of dense cable, run it around in a ring, and you put your dye in the middle. You could use ink sacks in this particular set of mod packs, lapis. There's a certain amount of dyes. You can check this out in, um, in NEI. Go over to your cables, just give them a click, and you can see what is actually usable for a dye here. Like I said, incredibly handy. Definitely check this out. Use as many colors as you possibly can to keep your stuff organized. Especially when you get to peer-to-peer -to -peer tunnels, it's it's going to get a, a little more difficult to keep this stuff straight. So, so how do these colored cables work? Well, we can do this in a couple ways here. If we throw some of these down, you'll see that the particular colors they will not connect to each other. So these these are completely disconnected. Now, sometimes this is a not an awesome thing, and sometimes this is a complete pain in the ass. So, let's say that we have a trunk here. Now, Fluix will always connect to any color. It doesn't care. It's the base, and this is the one thing to keep in mind about Fluix is that everything connects to it. Our colored stuff won't connect to each other, but it will connect to Fluix. So if, if you take a look here, these cables are now connected. And you can do this, you just have to watch it. Or look and see how many channels you have per cable. So these cover cables are only capable of 8. This dense is capable of 32, but the rest of this trunk is just 8. So you're even though you've got your dense cable here, you're still only getting 8 channels. So I like to keep these as short runs as I can, I guess. I don't mix dense cables off of, um, like I did just here, just because it becomes a huge pain in the ass once you're actually intertwining these things. So, just to show how these are wired up, and this is okay. Actually, let's let's reorganize this real quick. I'm gonna leave this dense cable here, and we'll get a couple connections. But let's let's actually get rid of this glass cable. Pick these guys up, and rather than use cover cable, because I find the smart cables to be the way to go, we're just gonna get rid of these. Use these instead. So let's just throw a blue along the top here. Oops. Okay, and those guys are connected. Let's see three of. We have eight channels there, and we'll throw these on. Okay. And even though these are connected on the bottom, because our dense cable is taking precedence here, it's taking over for these drives, you can see that this first device here, second and third, and these are running straight into the dense cable. So three of 32. Now we can go through and connect these guys. And this is the same thing occupy three channels but this particular cable now has six of 32 actually run into it 
So these are completely separate chunks. We could actually drag these out if we wanted to. And we could absolutely add a whole bunch more terminals here. Now one more thing to note, if you notice, before these terminals were purple, they have now turned to the same color as their attached cable. So, if you're looking for aesthetics throughout your base and you really want to change colors and stuff, you can absolutely throw different color cables on here. Let's pull this off. And this is perfectly valid to do. You can absolutely, well, not this connection in the back. But say you were just trying to get this terminal to be green. The rest of your stuff is Fluix. Throw a green cable on the end of there. Turns the terminal green. So that is there if you want to color your terminals. And it works for uh, pretty much every terminal that AE2 has. Some of the expansion mods, I don't think they necessarily support that though. But AE2, the base mod, absolutely does support this. So let's take a look and see what we've got for occupied channels here. See 12 out of 32, and that's being reflected by our smart cable. So, so let's try and let's get these drives hooked up. We'll just put a whole bunch of stuff on this one set of channels here. We're gonna do this a little bit different. Let's drag this dense cable out. Just to show what's going on here. Now, since these guys are directly next to each other, you're going to see that this set of channels is occupied by four already. And you can see that going back, because these dense cables are a little more condensed, so four of 32 channels. And if we get back over here, you'll see that those were actually added. So we're running 16 of 32. Now the cool thing about Fluix is we can just keep going right off of here. And since we've only got four on the end, we can absolutely hook these guys up. And there you have it. All hooked up, ready to go. So another four channels. You can see that this has increased to eight. Eight of 32, four and four. And if we run back over here, 20 of 32. So we do have the capability to actually expand per side with dense cables. That's the biggest thing to take away from this. And then just remembering to actually look at these and just keep a count of what you actually have running off of here. So 20 of 32, this is just an example. Just to take a look and keep this stuff organized. Um, the more you think about it towards the beginning of your build, the better it is, and it's it's much, much easier to attach these dense cables earlier, just because you have so much more room just to work with cables. So keep that in mind. But that's about it for our channel and cable management guide. We'll go over some of the more uh, the complex stuff uh, in another couple of videos here once we get into a little bit of our, our automation stuff. We're going to need some different colored cables. But that's it for now. This is Meat Magnet. See you guys later.